Hello, this is Judy. Thank you for coming to my interactions exhibit. Remember, just pause this video if you want to spend more time on a painting or if you need time to move to the next painting. Let me tell you a little about each of my paintings as you move through the gallery, beginning with several small works. Autumn Joy was a fun little painting in which I used a few different watercolor techniques which are unique to painting on the white clay coated panel called aquaboard. I started by using limited colors and I allowed them to mix randomly on the surface. I ended up with beautiful shades which inspired me to paint autumn leaves. I added darker mixtures of the same colors to define my shapes and to darken the background. Before the dark green areas on the left had dried, I laid a piece of kitchen plastic wrap on the paint, manipulating it so the folds were mostly vertical, and I left it there until the paint dried. When I lifted it off, the area had an interesting texture which I wouldn't have been able to paint so easily by using brushes. For the leaves themselves, I intensified the colors and I scratched the white clay surface to make the veins and other details and then painted in the shadows with darker shades. Scratchboard is a black ink surface with a layer of white clay underneath. Artwork is created by scratching through the black layer to reveal the white below using sharp tools like an X-Acto knife or abrasive tools like fine steel wool. How sweet it is is on a very small panel, but the details made it take a long, long time to create. I approached each element in a different way I did the chocolates and the wrappers by scratching tiny white dots, a technique called stippling. The background fabric was scratched with very fine lines in two directions. The lace border was done with little strokes to imitate the knotted thread. This was intense work, but I enjoyed creating this piece. I'm just glad I kept it so small. Night Bubbles is a small black scratch board and one of my many different paintings depicting bubbles by using various art media and surfaces. Here I made use of a circle template, tracing circles onto my board with a sharp pointed etch etching tool. To make the inner reflections, I centered different sizes of circles from the template over my outlines, tracing this time with a wide fiberglass brush to make irregular bands of the white clay layer below show through the black. My final touch was to add bright watercolors as the bubble reflections and as the dappled background of green and blue. I composed this image of Silly Selfie from free photographs I took of my rescued cat Jethro. Scratchboard is an ideal surface for paintings of animals since it lends itself to textures so well. I primarily used an X-Acto knife to scratch the fur and the face details. To create the soft look of sheepskin behind Jethro, I rubbed away the black surface making circular motions with a fiberglass brush. Using colored inks, I kept the color to a minimum to keep the focus on Jethro's funny face. The lettering and symbols on the phone turned out to be the most difficult part of the whole painting.
I was determined to paint bubbles to capture both their transparency and their colorful reflections. What a wonderful world is a watercolor on paper. And it's my final bubble artwork after trying lots of paintings with various media and different surfaces, like the little night bubbles shown earlier. I took many reference photos of my cute great nephew Liam, and this one stood out as the best one to paint from, capturing so much uninhibited expression. I love painting textures of weathered barns and rusty old hardware. Black scratch board was the surface I chose to paint this detailed scene. I left the black surface untouched in some places to add contrast and drama. Elsewhere, I used various scratching and abrasive tools, followed by colored inks, sometimes scratching and coloring over and again to build up the three-dimensional appearance. It was challenging to create the very rough boards, the twisted old hardware, the tarnished padlock, and the cast shadows, but I enjoyed every minute of it. My wonderful friends Bill and Lois took several safaris to Africa and came home with amazing photographs. They commissioned me to do several paintings and also gave me permission to use any I chose as my own painting references. This leopard was striking and the pink tongue provided the obvious center of interest. I used acrylic paints for this painting them in a transparent manner like watercolors on a rigid watercolor board. I actually have the honor of knowing the real Santa. In fact, he owns a farm in the town where I live and grows blueberries and apples next to his workshop. Santa graciously allowed me to photograph him and I painted his portrait with watercolors on aqua board. This textured white clay surface allowed me to depict his fabulous handlebar mustache, the fluffy white fur trim on his red velvet suit, the roughness of his skin, the shiny gold button, and the decorations and lights on the background Christmas tree. Santa was so pleased with my portrait that I earned a lifetime spot on his nice list. Forgive my pun, but I was driven to do this painting by the fabulous textures and colorage, colors on the old corroding car. I especially love how the word Studebaker is readable by the rust stain which surrounded the broken off emblem. For me, the real charm is that this 1961 model was purchased in Knoxville, Tennessee, the largest city near my home in East Tennessee. This is the largest watercolor I've done on a white aqua board to date. I tried to emphasize the complementary colors of orange and blue throughout. I used the unique property of aqua board to re-wet and lift paint, lightening colors, or revealing the original white surface below the painted areas. After gaining permission, I photographed this man at a Mennonite sorghum making operation in Muddy Pond, Tennessee. He was such an interesting character, and I was excited to try painting him in transparent watercolors. On the heavy watercolor paper, I used just six colors of paint, three warm primary colors and three cool primary colors. And I let them mix 
randomly in places and also mix them on my palette to create all the colors you see here. I applied many watercolor techniques like sprinkling salt on the background to make a texture resembling leaves and using masking fluid to preserve the fine white hairs on the man's face and beard. I also lifted and softened the paint to make his shirt look like soft flannel. You can watch a video of my entire process creating this painting on my website's video page. This is the eye of my cute rescue dog, Watson. I didn't realize the complex colors in the fur around his eye until I took some close-up photos. Painting the eye oversized makes for a dramatic effect. I painted this with earth tone watercolors on a smooth white clay coated panel called clayboard which is ideal for depicting fur and hair. One of the many reasons I love using clayboard, aquaboard, and scratchboard is because I can seal the finished panels with several coats of clear spray varnish. And this eliminates the need to use a mat and glass, even when I've painted with watercolors, as on this painting. The showy orchis is one of the most beautiful spring wildflowers which I've discovered in the forest which surrounds my home. Each flower is about one inch tall, but I painted them oversized to reveal the gorgeous shapes. My palette of purple, green, and a touch of orange make a triad of three complementary colors. In the end, I added little sparkles of light as fine dots on the main leaf and the petals using acrylic interference color. If you move slightly back and forth in front of this painting, you might see the color shift on those sparkles. This little fawn became stuck in our shallow creek between two steep banks of mud. I quickly took photos for reference after lifting him to safety, leaving him for his mother's return. For this acrylic painting on canvas, I used an imaginary setting on the forest floor, and I kept the area around the little deer soft with muted colors. The diagonal tree branch helps balance the composition, adding foreground textures. As a final step, I added spots of metallic copper acrylic paint, which you'll see if you look closely as the light hits the surface just right. I enjoy using abstract, vibrant colors in a realistic painting. In this watercolor of blackberry blossoms, I used what is called a limited palette, painting only with the three primary colors of red, blue, and yellow. As long as I paint the light, medium, and dark values in the right places, the subject will be recognizable, no matter what colors I use. To draw your eyes to the blossoms as the focal point, I emphasized them by using the most light and dark contrast there, as well as painting them with the brightest colors, hardest edges, warmest tones, and the most details. The background and the leaves are painted with soft edges, low value contrast, cooler colors, and limited detail. Anna's Fairy Duster 
is a detailed painting created on black scratch board. In this case, I removed the black layer with various abrasive and sharp tools. Then I used colored inks to add the soft blues and greens in the background and the vibrant colors on the hummingbird and flower. This tiny bird is the male Anna's hummingbird, which is often seen in the Southwest US. So I decided to add a border design with some motifs from Native American pottery found in that area. I like to turn square paintings to hang on the diagonal like this one, which adds a dramatic look. For the big catnap, I painted this group of resting lionesses from reference photos taken by my friend Bill while on safari in Africa. The expression of total comfort on the sleeping lioness is captivating, while the one on the right stays awake and on guard. Using acrylic paints transparently on watercolor board, I highlighted these two foreground cats by using the most color contrast and details to paint them while softening the, the peripheral sections of the painting. With backlighting from the sun, the fragrant blossoms and leaves of honeysuckle vines become beautiful transparent. I created this painting on white aqua board with watercolors. I completed about 90% of the painting before using some of the unique qualities I love about aqua board. In certain areas, like the highlighted edges, I re-wet the paint and lifted the color off, getting back to the white clay surface. Once I reveal these areas, I can leave them white or I can repaint them. I created the yellow veins on the leaves by scratching lines through the green shades I had already painted there, and then glazing over these uncovered white lines with bright yellow. I love working on aqua board with watercolors. Jethro was a willing model for these nine little portraits. I created each of these panels with different art media to illustrate the many uses for clayboard. I showed my techniques and used these portraits in a Zoom presentation I presented called Clayboard 101. Some of the media I hadn't used for years, like black ink, colored pencils, and graphite. Others I had never used for a painting, including the gouache paints and the watercolor markers. It was a challenging and fun project. To learn more about clayboard and its uniqueness, and my techniques for doing each of these portraits, you can watch a video on my website's video page. This painting will premiere in the exhibit at the opening reception on November 11th as my tribute to our veterans. The title Remembrance is in reference to red poppies being used as a symbol of fallen soldiers as in the poem called In Flanders Fields by John McRae. Big red poppies reseed themselves profusely in my gardens, and I love their frilly blossoms and fabulous shapes. The delicate petals become nearly transparent in strong sunlight, providing a variety of warm and cool colors. I used a square sheet of watercolor paper, placing the flower within a circle shape, painted as if the deckle-edged paper was against old barn boards.
Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the exhibit.